All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Coffees for Closers. A little bit of a weird one today. We were just having a chat and we decided to do a live podcast. James is in the States. Uh, this is lovely Cameron. Say hello, Cameron. Yeah, what's up, guys? Yeah, and Marco is in the house. What's up? So what are we talking about? We're talking about um, issues with scaling businesses, sales teams, all that kind of stuff. If you listen to this podcast, you will make your first million within three years. I'm going to repeat that. You will make a million dollars within three years of the first episode you listen to. We don't want pikers. We're not here to save the manatees. We're here to make podcasts. You really want this. You listen and review. Put that coffee down. We're talking about how we scale and why it wasn't that scary to grow anyway. Because he was, I think, what, what did you say before? Talking about like communication as you grow, growing a business, and then also just like managing so many, I guess managing sales, but also just how difficult like getting that sales growth can be for a company as well. Mm. So like actually yeah. managing the process of the growth. And you were saying that like with you guys, like the communication between the sales team, how like that's strong. We're talking about the type of culture, like level one, level two, level three mm. cultures as well. Yeah. Um, I think like the reason why I've always said why I don't think it's that hard to scale quickly is just because of the uh, the type of business that we have. Yeah. So like we don't have to have, I think coaching businesses are super easy to scale. So I think anyone who can't scale a coaching business in terms of they get the marketing and the sales piece right, like yeah. the logistics of the business are so incredibly easy. Simple, right? It's such mm -hmm. a simple yeah. model. The repeatable. margins are super high. Yeah. You have great verticals. You have upsells, cross sales, down sales. Like yeah. I do not get the guys who are like grinding out at 50K a month for five years. It's like just you problem solve better. Like your offers yeah. are not right. Your marketing is not like yeah. you know, find, find something to fix it. But if you get the sales and the marketing piece, right? Like it's honestly like it's the simplest model there is. Yeah. It's not infinitely scalable at all. Not at all. Like you have a cap. I reckon the average, I think it's like 1.2 a month or a million dollars a month yeah. for like a coaching 100%. business is where a lot of them are going to cap out. 100%. And the reason is you can go harder, but I don't think most coaches are willing to do what it takes to then infrastructure up to Correct. where, and then like you tank your margins so much by doing that, Correct. that you end up like Tony Robbins, which is, I mean, obviously not, but you end up like gigantic, mm -hmm. but with very little margin. Yeah. So you're probably making the same money as what you were with one third the revenue. Yeah. So I can see why a lot of people don't want to do it. Yeah. It just depends how. Oh, one thing that shit me right. is when coaches are like, I want to be bigger than Tony Robbins. And then like, yeah, but I don't want to go that. lower than. They shouldn't say that because it's not really real. <laughs> yeah. But it's also like, but then yeah. I don't want to go below a 60% net. And it's like, yeah. well, champ, like I hate to break it. <laughs> I hate to break it. I've had that conversation with like four of our clients. So I was like, well, it's not going to happen to me. Yeah. Like, because you don't have any balls the way you yeah. grow, grow a business like but like it's fine to not want that i think mm. it's perfectly reasonable just don't say you want it and then do absolutely nothing right and then act in a totally yeah. different manner you know yeah like i think you look at like taki it's a perfect example of like a dude who knows what he wants mm -hmm. and he's taken a business to a level he could definitely go bigger i think for sure he could go bigger mm -hmm. like especially with how good his name is and stuff like that mm -hmm. and the fact that he systemized it to within an inch of its life and he has almost nothing to do with it mm -hmm. but he's just super happy he wants there, right? he's just super happy yeah, making a ton of money yeah. he probably makes two hundred thousand dollars a month do you think personal money your you know? ambition is bigger like you guys the, the what you guys are trying to grow and yeah yeah way it's way bigger than the yeah, typical yeah. Industry, like, i'll be bigger like, than cardone i don't know yeah, how, so I, I don't know it's how a different conversation right sometimes i think about it it's like, i don't know how we got all together because we all so similar that we're going yeah because that's what i was telling you before the growth yeah. i was like man like if i stay the same mm -hmm. for more than 30 days i'm gonna start questioning myself right real highs that's not normal though right so like the level of like know. ambition <laughs> and scale of like perspective like if you say what you just said right like we're gonna grind it down like the thing is is that when you hear that that's congruent like it's actually something that's a genuinely planned goals and tension right so with you guys that level of intensity around that growth is a lot different, right? Like the speed at which yeah. you want to do it, the aggressiveness at which you want to do it. Like yeah. probably the mentality that's there is actually required for that level of growth, would yeah, you say? Yeah, yeah for sure. you have to have kind of ballsy decisions that I you've think, got to, uh, make to make that leap. Bro, we spent a ton of money. Yeah. We spent a right? crazy amount of money. You, we, we, I'm lucky that like we got some madness to turn up about business and mm -hmm. what it needs for to sure. happen for backup action. For right? sure. There is true equation. It's like when, you, when we were around the, what's 12, um, 300k a month that we sign up that big client that we had 300 leads a week uh, yeah it was around 350 we were at yeah, yeah. when we sign up that client I had the kind of moment I remember it was around Christmas and they were they were going in holiday 
And I was like, this is the next six months. I got to back up the action. Like I got to start going really, really in because otherwise it will never grow as I think we should. Mm -hmm. So that is like a responsibility. It's like, well, I don't know how it's going to look like, mm -hmm. but I either going to study like I'm mad, yeah. work 14 hours a day, yeah. make it happen until we get to now, which yeah. is like, honestly, like I will wrap it up in 40 hours. I work 70 to 80 because I, I love it. Sure. Because I live out of it. Yeah. But I will do my 40, 50 hours and get out of there. Out of what? Out of the account? Out of the business? Out of the entire business, man. <clears throat> like I would did help help do stuff in 40 hours and get out of it. I, think, right. I think the good thing about what we've managed to do though is like, although everybody does a lot of hours, I don't think anyone, I think anyone can take a holiday, right? I think with, with a bit of notice, I think anyone can take a holiday. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I think like your responsibilities, although they're vast, we could hand them off to a few people for like a month and everything would be okay. For sure. Because everything is systemized in ClickUp and what you do and your diary and everything's been kind of planned out. So yeah. like technically like it is probably take two to three people to be honest to like replace, replace. Like when, when you go to your next echelon. So like at the end of next year when we've hit the goals and then you need to go on to your next thing, it's going to be like, okay, well we need to start in six months time putting people in which is one of the reasons why we got jimmy's it's like let's take over the all the marketing responsibilities that you have and then get jimmy in yeah and then he can handle all those responsibilities and we beat a team around that and then we can monetize that team as well through like, like additional revenue which then mitigates the expenditure of their coming on but then also finances the growth of allowing the next thing you know for, for you matt that's a question i wanted to ask you when did you know that we were getting at least close to where we are now is there a moment during the path from like last year? It was pretty much from last November when we grew, started going like. I'll show you the spreadsheet. We hit our goals to within 30,000 a month of the exact plan that I laid out for 2021. Uh, within about 30K. We're actually, a, we're actually a month ahead of schedule. So it's that kind of like level of planning. My observation has been that's not present in the vast majority of business owners, right? Like, especially if you talk about coaching industry, you're going to have people that are running on one month to month, two months of thinking out for yeah. the most part and a lot of hopes rather than stuff. So like for you, do you notice that when you're starting to help people grow? Like when you come in, do you actually yeah, man, noticing people. that you have to come in and put that way of thinking in to try? Yeah, to we do. So with the guys future. that we take equity and I do that with everybody. So I have a, a meeting with all the business owners and then mm -hmm. we go over like, I go, I want to try and figure out where they want to go. Yeah. And then like realistically, like are, what are they willing to do to get there? Because mm -hmm. I'll go like, I want to take a dollar out for three or four months. It's fine. Like, well, I'm happy with that. Like, I'll even lend the business money. Mm. Uh, except for the comms. I'll just take the comms. But I won't take like an, like, a, like an owner's share or anything like that. We'll just keep reinvesting as long as they're willing to do the same. Mm -hmm. But then I always set up like how much money you need to live. And then we set them up on a wage and all that kind of stuff to make sure that they're all safe. So they're not in that like fight or flight mode. They're not making decisions mm -hmm. but then it's like okay cool well like this is how business works yeah and then i kind of sit down and explain like i spent an hour and a half with tony mm -hmm. the other day going like this is how your business is going to look over the next 12 months if we hit these goals and mm -hmm. this is what decisions are going to have to be made and this is the kind of what the curves are going to look like and the revenue and the dips and the ups and like all the the there's like all these black holes at different growth points you know what I mean? Where a lot of businesses kind of get sucked in, they get stuck there like that. But if you know where they are and you can like pre-plan around them and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know? So, mm -hmm. which is one thing that we, we did really, really well. Me and James sat down at the, at the end of last year and we planned out like every month based on growth targets. And then we sat down and we were like, okay, well, what do we need mm -hmm. in order? Like if I, what I always do is I go, okay, if I picture myself at like 5 million a month and I go, okay, like what, what do, what does the map at 5 million a month? know that I don't know right mm -hmm. now and then that's like that's like the development pathway that I take mm -hmm. yeah. so like I start talking to dudes like um, it's not business coaching because you can't get business coaching for shit like this you have to like go to people who are really good at individual things yep. and just start picking their brain yep. and try, it's not like books or anything you just have to talk to people we have to pull the skill for the problem right yeah. so it's like you got, are going to have Matt at 5 million a month or Marco at 10 million a month whatever it is you've got to have like a particular skill set that you'd be there like you're working mm -hmm. on marketing right now right like copy driving copy yeah, yeah. like if I look at Brad Lee and I go like what's Brad Lee really good at yeah. And I'm like, that's super interesting. Like we had a chat with Brad the other day and it's well, like, what's he really good at that you're not good at? You mean? Yeah, he's just a brilliant marketer, man. Yeah. yeah. 
Like he's, uh, he has figured out his branding and he's yep. been doing it for one, he's got time. So you can't get frustrated when time is a factor and time is always a for factor. Sure. So you just need more time. And that's sure. like, yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. It's the reason why we do YouTube videos well, and five podcasts. Five years of compound interest on marketing uh, when you have money is a lot of exposure, right? Exactly. Like, like we've never. It's also exposure. like when you start acting out of your character, that's where things go sideways. That's no, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, you people see, start doing content they think people want to see instead of the content they want instead to see. Instead of who they are? Yeah. There you go, like we're doing content that Why was we that something that came to your mind so quickly? Because like if I think about brand that at some point when in a direction when you understand like what these guys doing, right? Mm-hmm. Like the sales guy, the sales coach, and after now all of a sudden it becomes like the crypto investor coach. Yeah. <laughs> all, the, all those dudes like oh, yeah. right. I'm a today. Stay yeah. there. <laughs> so, you know, like it gets hard. Because when, they change lanes or because they're just trying to be something that they're not, you mean? No, because I think at some point we, that ties up what Matt, what Matt was saying. You lose a lot of profit. That you arrive at half a million per month. I think that's a mark mm-hmm. when you make the decision, which is either hey, we're either gonna be like this and always go the middle size company and be fine with that, yep. or we the crash profit. Sure, you're gonna get a, a ton of like offices and yep. stuff, and yep. you invest for get bigger, and that's not easy. No, it's not easy to go and get less money, yep. put more work yep. for the long run. For <laughs> yeah, a lot of it's a lot of it's a very right? different vision, right? Yeah. And then you have mm-hmm. immense amount of stress, like the level of stress and like that comes with trying to find the right people, keep the right culture. Exactly. Right. I don't know though. Like, well, you're never really stressed. I don't, I don't know. Really you're stressed because, because, stress, but that's that's what, that's where we, what I realized with us, and especially we knowing you uh, inside the outside work is this. Hiring people is like retargeting in marketing. If you direct the ads, the first, into a good, yeah. good environment, a good mm-hmm. culture, you retarget at the back end there. So right. you can, you can tell what we want. <laughs> you can tell what we're looking for by the content we put out. Right. Yep. So what have I been doing for the last sure. few weeks? Yep. Big deals. Yep. Right now, who does that interest? It's not the business owners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the sales, sales guys. guys. Yeah. yeah. The sales guys constantly message me and they go, "What the f- are you selling?" Yeah. And yeah. Go, Come find out. Of course. Yeah. Like that. And so like, yeah. I want the best sales guys, the best sales guys want to close the biggest deals. Sure. So all I have to do is show all the big deals that we're closing. Mm-hmm. And then if I want to get accounts, all I have to do is show the ROASes. Yeah. That's like step one. Then you, then as the owner, you have to create the pathway for that, right? And that's what makes culture hard because you have to win at a level which is big enough to support. Culture is only hard if the person, right? the front of it is selfish. Correct. That's, that's like or, or, not, or simply not capable enough of doing the big stuff, right? Because you can have a leader that yeah. thinks they can, but they may not be able to. Yeah, I think, I think, well, I think that yes and no, yeah. because like I'm not capable of doing the things that Marco does. I'm also sure. not capable of doing what Will does. Mm-hmm. I'm certainly not capable of doing what Ben does. Yeah. It's so outside of my wheelhouse, it, that's why I hired him, yeah. right? What does Ben do? He's the operations right. manager. He's the f-ing nitty gritty admin. Got like, I, like he, he, when he, we brought him on, he's one of my best friends. Mm. He's a kid, wife is pregnant, coming from a really, really good position mm. in the military on very good money. And I said, I'll make sure you're safe. Mm. And I identified him and I started grooming him for that position about nine months before yep. I knew I could afford it mm. at that. And then as soon as I got to a chance where I knew I could go, I'll make sure your family's safe. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, you have to come work for me and offer him a package that he couldn't refuse. Mm. The unit, man. The yeah. unit. Mm. Yeah. And so like that was a big deal for him and everyone like that to, to obviously lo- 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 to go away from something he's been for doing for, you know, 15, 20 mm. years and in a really highly, a good, really well paid position to come over and work for like a borderline f-ing startup, you know, a run about by his life. friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so your culture, it seems like because what you were just saying before is the same as what you were saying around like you guys seem to get each other. Like this kind mm-hmm. of uh, I hire my friends. About, like level four and like yeah, well, like because yeah. you guys really kind of have your respect and lane. Like and we went yesterday. I was shopping and today we we're working. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't do like I couldn't do that with a lot of people. Right. Like you would hate me. He did it in my house last night. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like like for example, for me, prior to coming, I was like, no, work is work. Mm-hmm. This is the first kind of mix that mm. I get, mm. which is like, I'm super grateful for it. It's life changing. It's very different. Right? I tried to replicate the Very home. different having, very like, different. when you don't want to create that separation, that's the biggest thing I see in like corporations, right? Where you see like people have a work persona and a personal persona. Like for me, I hate that. I find that violently that was offensive. Me. It's like, <laughs> I, I, it just makes me sick. That was just me. Like, like, you what do you mean you have a separate thing? But because you have to. Because you feel like that when you are in the 
work outside work persona, you people don't accept who you are. Correct. So you gotta come up with something different. Correct. Right? For me, you and James, we have a whole different oh, relationship yeah. again. Yeah. Me, like I'm the big brother, and James and Marco, my little brothers. Yeah. yeah. Like that's the relationship. We buy each other like fifteen thousand dollar Christmas gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not because <laughs> it's not because we have, it's not because <laughs> we have the money to do so, like, but yeah, like yeah, it, yeah, it would yeah. be proportional. Just it's fun, just right? you know, like yeah. I know what Marco's getting for Christmas, and yeah. you know. I know you guys have done something big for me. For yeah. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know it was like fifty grand. Yeah, yeah, well, so if I can think of it, that's good. Anyway, so it's just it's about that call though, right? Like yeah. that's different. But I think I think a lot of business owners they would they maybe want to create that, but it's different yeah. to do it. I was just thinking. I was just got told never hire your friends, never hire your family. I just hired my auntie. I hired my right. dad. Ben's one of my best friends of all time. Right. I hired Tori as a, as our financial <laughs> controller, advice, yeah. right? Who's my uh, who's my daughter's godmother? Right. Right, my, my wife's my, my wife's best friend. Assistant. Yeah, my his girlfriend's my assistant. And always tell me, don't whenever work with your girlfriend because about how we had the best time. Huh? Right, she she, she never complains about. I swear, of right. course she does a bunch of stuff, <laughs> <laughs> but she always complain about work. Always, right. always. I work. She never complain about nothing. Mm. Zero. Mm. The, the idea is this: I think is like from I was the second sales guy that he had. Yeah. Um, overall, I think I think it was the second. Right? Yeah, Jimmy was the first. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy was the first. Still here, and he's still mm. here, right? When COVID hit, I knew that he would have been struggling because it was yeah. fitness based. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll give Jimmy a call. He's probably yeah. struggling. And then he gave me a call and he told me everything that happened. I was like, oh, I already knew all that, man. Yeah. It's all good, dude. You're a good guy. Like, it's, yeah, it's fine. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. So he came on and he's been our head sales trainer. The guy who does all the core reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been our head, head sales trainer for like two years now. Mm. And uh, awesome dude. And he's like living in like combination of Cyprus and the UK and he's going to mm. live his dream. We helped him out with some charity stuff that he was doing, helped him out with this book that he wanted to do. Mm. He's a f great dude. So this is you know? a couple of things you just said that was important, right? Because that's the stuff that creates relationship yeah. and culture. That's yeah. actually, there's a human like there. I've never seen someone be able to cut, attract so unique human beings in him. Mm. Never since. And I work with a lot exactly. of them. Like to put them all in and one work, place together. I work in different yeah. countries. And collect like stones like Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a post on Facebook. It's crazy, man. Yeah. But it's like, I think it's because also- From the sales of them, I know what leverage to pull, but be, I like people. Yeah. You've been a sales call with me. Yeah. So you understand how I am and how I am here, right? Yeah. So it's like, though, but when we talk about sales, I've still been on a sales call with you. Yeah. That means like, that I do what I say I do. Yeah. And people appreciate that. Yeah, that's Because fair. a lot of sales trainer or a lot of sales people, they, they talk about, you should be making a million dollars in commissions. Like, have you? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Have you really made that money? Or yeah. do you really make money yeah. in selling? So I think people know, I really hope that they know that like we sales people, I sure. took a sales call in five. I should, probably shouldn't have to. This yeah. week had, last week I took five sales calls because I wanted to. Sure. Right? So people like that. People say, like, oh, those are real people. people they yeah. do the stuff that they say. So yeah. we have I think, to I think as well. that's congruence, right? That's, yeah. that's really important. But I think as well, I think the reason why we've managed to do it is because there's just a giant vacuum in the market of like, uh, like yeah. sales teams are just, like they're they're traded as commodities, mm -hmm. you know, because we wanted to get into recruitment and like we set it all up, spent the money, mm. whole thing. <laughs> I treated it as commodities. Did it like did it maybe yeah. place six people and went oh no we're done no right like that because there were a couple of like afterwards they were just getting treated like shit. well no there well there was that there were a few ethical we actually had the big discussion I was like we had a big round table and I was like okay anyone can answer me these questions then we'll keep doing it yeah if if you find a really good sales guy. Will we keep them or will we give yeah. them? Yeah, right. And we never was like, oh, right. like we keep them. Yeah. And I was like, then all we're doing is placing the B team. Right. Yeah. And I was like, do we pl do we do anything that isn't good? Right. No, sweet. Then we can't really back our name against anybody because right. anyone who's really good, I'll find an account because I'll make money off them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's done. Yeah, for sure. We had to wrap it up. I was like, I just, I can't. Yeah, deconflict that. Giving people that yeah. I can't deconflict it. And then also, it's a sh show of a business model. I don't know how cold does it, but because you can get placed mm. and then like the leads can shit themselves, yeah. the guy can leave. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. He will yeah, leave. Yeah, he will leave. He should, <laughs> like, he should, he he should leave, leave, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then like if the guy doesn't perform, so you end up in the middle. Yeah. And very rarely is that circumstance going to work out quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's like, is, is it that ends you, up being a, re it's a really tough model. Mm. It's, it's tough because you, you coordinated two parties and after you pretty much you have put, no control over either put right. them together but it's like you don't have it yeah. like, 
You don't have it in both sides. Yeah. We is really weird. It, so we it, sell it, it makes Ricardo is even actually really impressive it's, to me. Yeah, it's impressive. Like, I don't know how he's managed to do it. Yeah. Like whether it's, I mean, obviously it's successful, but whether it's effective or not, I don't know. Mm. I assume that it is just because of the, the way that it's gone. You mm. know what I mean? Like I can't use the stuff that I hear because the only people that I ever speak to are people that it hasn't worked out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in the same right. verse versa, the only people that he would speak to that yeah. have anything to do with me, I've either fired them yeah. or it just hasn't worked out. Yeah. Right? So it's like you can't take any of that stuff. You have to take it with a grain of salt. Mm. But um, yeah, like it's an impressive, it's a difficult business model. Mm. Um, Good on him. I gotta be honest because yeah. like it takes it, it takes a lot for understand the true part. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. difficult. But yeah, like I don't think that. Um, yeah, going back to the culture thing, I don't. I think like as long as the person at the top is just, I think they have to. If they have everyone's best interest at heart, I don't. I don't think you can go too wrong. Mm. You know, but I think people want to like. I remember like people want to. Um, one of our guys wants to buy in. And um, his brother-in-law is like an M&A lawyer. Mm. And he's like, oh, this is this doesn't make any sense, this deal, this, this, and this. Yeah. Now he's in America and it's an Australian company. So sure. that lawyer doesn't understand our structures at all. So yeah, 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 right. it's like half yeah. of the questions are like, not in the, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like none of those things exist in this country. Yeah. Because right. their corporate structures are yeah, so, it's much very, more, very, so much more yeah, comprehensive and, and more different. Comprehensive. And they're tax, you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. here it's like, it's a company. Yay. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. yeah you buy shares. Expensive. Here you go. You yeah. buy a percent. There you go. Cost this much money. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Right. Now you own a percent. Yay. Yeah. Um, and the shareholders agreement is where all the nitty gritty is taking, taken care of essentially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you know, but he was like, well, like, he, that M&A lawyer just wouldn't believe anything I had to say. Right. It's like, no, I just want everyone to do really well. Yeah. I can mm -hmm. keep it all for myself. What but like, say? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I just want people to do well. Like, so... Some people, if, are, he doesn't see that normally. <laughs> it's yeah. like, we're used to buying and stripping like, up the parts. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. need the money. Uh, personally, I don't yeah. need the money in the business. If this is what keeps this person super happy and keeps them Biden for a long term, I can't do it for free because it's not fair to everybody else. Yeah. This is the market rate that I... C is fair. If you mm. want to do it, great. If not, it's cool too. Mm. Like, but I just want everyone to succeed in the way that they need to succeed. Yeah. And if this is what helps a person do that, then I'm willing to facilitate it. Mm. Um, but, but I think if everyone knows, like everything, everyone knows that the decisions that I make and that me and James make together, yeah. I think they know that everyone's best interest is at heart. Mm. And I think that level of transparency, the thing that really frustrated me in the military was the lack of transparency and the, mm -hmm. the compartmentalization. Mm -hmm. Now it was necessary for the roles that I was in. But, like, they could have done a lot better job when handing down decisions that affected the lower and the mid-tier people. Like, it actually affected their day-to-day -day right. in peeking behind the curtain to the degree in which they could to where, like, they not justify but explain to, to make the lens of the, small, of the lower people a bit wider. Yeah. And then they could go, okay, I don't like it, but I understand but this it. is why we're doing it. This yeah. seems like one of one to me. This is the yeah. basic thing that you would obviously yeah. do. But. Yeah, but no one does it, man. Really? Yeah. Not many people like, like every two weeks we have a, a team training mm. and on that team training, we do admin house and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then I'll go, okay, like this is what's happening. This is the decisions that we're making. Yeah. These are why we're making it. Yeah. And although like you might not understand if you need clarification on it, then just talk to your direct hierarchy. Mm. They'll fill you in. I go, there's nothing top secret. Mm. We don't live, <laughs> there's nothing top secret that everyone can't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions, like, because we might shut down an account. Yeah, yeah. And they'll, and they'll, they'll have they no idea. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, well, this wasn't taken lightly. Yeah. And these are all the mitigating factors of why we did it. Yeah. And But if we do shut down an account, we'll, we will redo all the manning structures, like, in advance so that we can immediately replace someone's income, right? So we have that structure in place. And then also we, we tell them why mm -hmm. it was all happening try and give them like a behind the curtain because I think if people don't understand decisions they start doing the whole thing which is like oh it's so f***ing easy all they should have to do is this mm -hmm. right you know what do you mean what do you mean by that well like in the, like in the military so when you have like a big corporate bureaucracy yeah. you end up with like the lowest level people thinking the hierarchy are morons mm -hmm. because the decisions yeah, don't make don't sense to them, them well, right? yeah but also like the decisions don't make sense to them because sure. they're looking at things through this mm -hmm. Right, and they're going like, "Oh, this is what I see, and this is the easiest result." Yeah. The hierarchy is looking at everything mm -hmm. and going like, "Well, given the totality of the evidence, I have to make this decision, For which sure. might f around this person, this person, this person." And then you get the grumblings from these three people going, "Oh, these f it's so easy. All they have to do is this." Mm. 
right? And so like you need, that is like culture cancer. So you need to mitigate that from day one by having like a super transparent like top end structure mm -hmm. where like everyone sort of can have access to as much information as they need, you know, I'm not going to give out the p and of the business, but sure. I, I will usually give a state of like where we're at. So have you noticed that as well? Like people feel like they really understand what's going on yeah. and that like there's a sense that uh, people understand where things are going, why they're making it, and that creates like a culture of openness. Yeah, because the decision they always made is in base of can they make money on that account? Yeah. That was our first child. You remember you, you yeah. told me that. It's like, yeah. it's not about how we make money. It's like, can that person be successful mm -hmm. in that environment? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now they kind of understood that we're making decision because like, hey man, looking into your eye, you can't make money there. So mm. you just gotta get out of there. So right. that created like the, if I want to shut down an account tomorrow, I will do it. I don't have to give an explanation to nobody because they sure. know that I do it for a criteria. The criteria is like, can they shine yeah. into that? Yeah. So they trust us to yeah. make a decision. We done a retreat no longer, it was like about two weeks ago. Right? Yeah. The buying from people, what we do and the decision we make mm -hmm. for them is like crazy. Yeah, they know that we work in the background. I was like, oh, those guys don't want to give us, put us in the best position sure. possible because we've been in sales, right? So we yeah, know, yeah. like, the camp this crap doesn't have leads, so we gotta go and fix the lead. Yep. That's how I go into marketing. It's like, okay, what we gotta do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's pick up the pieces, right? Yeah, yeah. let's try to make it up. Yeah, so that's 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 why they know that they know that we're trying to make the best up. Yeah, yep, 100%. Yeah. That's where that vacuum is that I was talking about. Like, there's just a vacuum. Like a vacuum well, just with the people being treated as a commodity. Mm. Yeah. Like, because the the salespeople are like the vagrant, vagrant homeless people of the business world mm -hmm. that are like, but they are like the engine. They're literally the engine. The engine. I mean, right? they really are. But this is, this is the thing I think that you understand that they, that I think most people, a lot of people in business don't understand. If you do that well, everything else works 10 times better. Even if you have sh marketing if you literally have a, a, a rock star sales, sales team, team can transform and save and keep a business going yeah. right Whereas, it's like you look at that you get that example of jeremy right so when jeremy was um i don't know what business he was selling for but he was doing like a few million dollars a year commission mm. and he had the biggest office and all that kind of stuff right he had the bigger office than the ceo was making more money than the founder yeah right? like he was killing it and 50% of his leads were self-generated. Yeah. So 25% cold calling, 25% referral, 50% raw leads. He's still in 3 million. So 1.5 million was cold, was just leads, but he still kept going, Crazy. right? And then they shrank. They realized how heavy leverage they were against him, which is sure. a really scary thing to have. They should have just f***ed him equity. Honestly, that's what I've done. Yeah. But, of course. It's most like, obvious thing in the but world, what they did is they tried right? to mitigate their risk <laughs> by like lowering w the areas in which he could oh, sell. Jesus, that, that was a decision. So he quit the that day, joined the competitor, and f***ed bankrupted the company. How yeah. obvious is that move, though? You're like, oh, my God, we've got a jackpot. This guy's a complete freak of nature. Like, yeah, mate, we're just give him, give him equity. Building. Building. We're lucky as, like, we're yeah. the luckiest people on earth. Here's the equity, dude. Yeah. What because do you, you, you know, that's, that's, that's what you think because you are in the field that you sell. Now, if someone is above you, and he does marketing. Yeah, he, he marketing. thinks it's their marketing. We got leads. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess the way I look at it is as people, though, because I think at the end of the day, your biggest asset is extraordinary people. And like, the, so they did yeah. research recently with like coders, and they got uh, they got coders in a room, and they wanted to see the difference between great coders and average coders. And they basically were like, okay, it's probably going to be like two to three x. And the difference was thirty x. Yeah. So basically, the best best were thirty times better than the worst. And so like for me, I think about like I've seen this through coaching. You see like high performers, the top one to five percent are just ten times better than like people in the fifty percent range. Yeah. So like if you can create something like you guys, I mean, think about how much you can sell. Yeah. But right? we put you on any account with like an average person that's selling, and you're gonna sell five times, ten times more. It's oh, just so, but yeah. <laughs> but but this well, the evidence yeah. is evidence, right? So it's the same thing. It's like the actual you find that in every single area, the 80, 20, right? Your top 20% will be eight, but it's even more than that. So yeah. I just think about it from a people perspective. It's like, how rare is it to find in that example? How rare is it to find somebody with that level of a gift? Yeah. It's insanely rare. So then what do you yeah. do? Yeah. You take that gift and you're yeah. like, cool, let's, how big can you be yeah. as a result? But a lot of, of a lot of business owners will, they will default to scarcity. I'm amazing. Yeah. My marketing is incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My messaging is amazing. What I built is incredible. That guy is yeah. just, he's just a little bit better at using the great tools that I've given him. Right. So like we speak great to clients area. all the time where they go, our sales team 
our marketing is amazing. I just got to doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Otherwise, like, you'd be way more successful. Yeah. Because if you had amazing marketing, it's basically laydowns. Yeah. Right? So you can close at 30 or 40%, barely, totally. barely even trying. Yeah. Right? So, like, you should be, you're not. You're closing at five. We had a guy come in there closing at 5%, and they said it was the sales team. And this is back, like, a while ago, and we were like, oh, shit, their sales team must be shit. So put together this consulting agreement, this whole thing. I went and bid an assessment, and I go, oh, they're actually pretty good. <sighs> like that and then I ended up having an argument mm. with the business owner and he's like you're supposed to do this and I was like yeah but I don't want to do any of that yeah. because your sales team is good mm. I was like I can smack him about as much as you want I go your marketing sucks mm. no it doesn't I do the marketing myself I go that's f- great chance I go but you're not very good at it you should probably hire someone and I go I don't want to take your money yeah you haven't given me any yet I am bowing out because I just went I'm out because like you need a marketing consultant you don't need a sales consultant your sales team is a average level sales team, which is all you should need to be successful. Because like if you have a rock star sales team. This sounds like something you see on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. If you have like a rock star sales team, then it becomes like a whole different dangerous thing because like uh, you you start thinking things are way better than what they are. You start thinking your marketing is way better. So then like it makes the marketing department super like lackadaisical. We see it all the time. Like when Marco was selling for TOB. Mm, and I, I was, that business, man. Yeah, and I was like, hey, dude, your marketing sucks. And they go, that can't what? be. He destroyed the business. Mm. I mean, no, yes and no. You mean sold so many people that it was yeah, like, like broken. So I, we put, we put Cas- the client delivery guy in the hospital. Yeah. Oh, man. Cascade of effect, man. It's just like the delivery. It just just wasn't ready for it. Yeah. It's probably one of the most successful programs that I've seen. Uh, right. That program when I first joined was so good. Right. So you were getting people in. First 30, 60 days, they used, used to make 20 grand, 15 Oh, wow. So what I used to do, I was like, let me, let me, I was like, let me sell everyone. Yeah. So I sold everyone into it because I, I, after what I'd done, I was like, let me get referrals out of them. <laughs> so I was generating my own stuff. And it was, <laughs> it was, so it was like, like, from like a small wave to a tsunami. Of, oh, yeah. Uh, no, we like yeah. tripled the business really, really quickly, like tripled right. it. Then he then he thought that like, then we started, then, then I came in and I was like, all right, man, like the leads are really bad. Right. Really I was bad. like, I go, you just have a unicorn. And I go, I don't want to sound arrogant, but right. I, I go, you have a unicorn of a salesperson. There's a real Baca. problem. Yeah, I go, there's right. a real problem here. If we don't fix it, yada, 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 he disagreed with me. Then he took back over the sales management and a few other things. The mm-hmm. business halved that mm-hmm. month. Then we took back over, doubled it again. Right. And then he figured out he wanted to exit. So he had to yeah. tank the business. Mm-hmm. And just collect all the cash possible. Right. And then he sold it. Because that's the coming back to the original thing is we talk about growth, right? Yeah. When you hit 300K, then you make the decision, which is like, okay. Right. Either take those money that I like rather than buy a Tesla, Rolex, yep. uh, uh, blah, 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 put them down. It's like, okay, you know what? You want more leads? Get more leads. Like, yep. let's try that. Let's try that. We, we constructive plan. Mm-hmm. He didn't. It's like, man, I don't know what to do. <laughs> that dude went like, I don't know what's going on. I mm-hmm. don't know what to do. And I don't know how to fix it. Mm-hmm. So see, I bought and he sold it. Right. They complete like the, you saw it like well, a this month, is, right? so, yeah, it's quick. So quick, yeah. that's like the skill thing, right? Though, like you understand how to do that. You understand what had to happen, and you're like the engine of what was making that work. But then someone didn't understand it, even though they're the business. No, right there and there is, but I learned how to do the marketing. Right, right there and there, because I was like, marketing is so bad. Mm-hmm. It was so bad. Right. That I was like, man, I gotta understand what's going on. Right. So. Uh, then I went through his, <laughs> I went through his program, <laughs> and learned it, and I was like, okay, I can understand how this could work. Mm-hmm. But that's part of that. Mm-hmm. With more experience, is what I use. That's where you figured out how to use setters. Yeah, I was like, okay, I just need a different process for setters and stuff. So mm-hmm. let me use the sales skills that I got towards the setters, and I've done it. And that's how we got leads. After right. Jeremy put his hand on it on a different project, and he went the next. Right. But it's like. That's the ability of like, there's like, okay, I've got a problem, I'll fix it. Mm-hmm. And that's how you get better, but also that's how you grow. It's like, okay, now I gotta put the activity in because I can't say I'm the best sales guy on the planet. Now I actually gotta do it. Right. So I gotta find the leads. So I was like, okay, this is what I do. Now they get results here. Let's build a referral process here. Let's have it systemized. Let me have the script. Let me have the set to do it. And at that same do. time, I was farming the Facebook group for seventh level. Yeah. So I was the main sales guy for seventh level. So I started farming a Facebook group, which we hadn't done before. Mm. And business suite, 10K revenue probably were going in. Like, yeah. 
And then right. but they had a marketing girl and an operations lady. From 10K to 300. And we oh. took it, no, we took it to, from 10K a month to 800K a month in less than a year. Yeah. Which one was that? Seven South, South, South. South. Okay. Jeremy. Right. Yeah, we went aggressive with yeah. that one. Mm. Yeah. Me but, but we, but we took idea. over. But we, we took, but I planned that takeover the moment I signed up for his coaching. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy, man. I remember that. They can't, I'm going to work with this guy. I was like, yeah. That's a lot of growth very fast. Yeah. yeah. Super easy, though, because it's coaching. Yeah. So yeah, but, you, once you have the yeah. program, you just fill it. Yeah. Th and we, we, we set up the program for scale. Like yeah. we just, we yeah. just, we set it up. We were like, okay, well, this is what's going to break. So we just made it so it couldn't be broken. Because he did the sell. And after, uh, after him doing the sales, it was like, okay, my idea was like, because that point I was started doing managers, like, let's get him out of sales. We'll get more opportunity for everybody right. that worked out. I was like, let me do the sales. I right. was doing the sales by myself. Right. And we it's oh, a good account to sell, man. So much. It was fun. so good, man. So much fun. Fun. So, I remember when this is when you guys. Yeah, you're on a cool. I remember when you guys. Everyone's frame, right? That's when you're all just fucking framing all the sales. Yeah, that's right. They couldn't. They couldn't stop it. Throwing objections at you and you're straight away back with like, oh, it's, so how are you gonna sell it? No one said no. I didn't get like, man. I reckon like, I was easy closing. You guys earned your names at that point. I was easy closing ninety percent of that account. That was like, I just knew how to close that account. I was like, I'm done. I've done um, November, December, <laughs> January, and February, and ninety percent conversion rate. I yeah. couldn't fail because, like, I was like, "Man, Jeremy is the best sales guy on the planet." Yeah. So it's like that's as far as I' gonna go. Yeah. And I was like, "I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show how good I'm gonna get." Here. Yeah. Yeah. So that I was like, ends on everything. And then it just proved itself, right? So yeah. you're the example of what they're. But the, but after like three days, I was like, oh, it's actually fun. So it sounds people because right. I used to sell sell right. to sell business around kind of for cold calling for grand, right? Yeah. So it kind of reminded me when I first started, and it gave me a kickback as well, right. or actually learning more. Right, right. Because I was like, F I actually like it because right. that's why I wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, yeah, the, the fun time was there. Obje objection handling, if you want to learn how to objection handle, we got to sell our sales pets. Yeah. yeah. Really? Know, and Brent broke know people. They know oh, you yeah, of course they do. And they know your process too. Bro, you know? It's not like, oh, yeah, that's a good question. The, hard, the hardest calls are <laughs> the, the hardest calls consequence the people. If you go do this Bro, like, you play in poker and the other guys know your cards. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The yeah. hardest calls were the guys who yeah. had done like an eight week course or done like the portal uh -huh. and then come in uh -huh. and they'd been in NEPQ for like five years and I've been doing it for six months. Uh -huh. And then I had to sell them and I couldn't, it was, that was hard. That was hard. But it was fun though. It was fun though. Cause then you just got to go different ways or then I, but then I started selling using that fourth wall. What do you mean by different ways when like, yeah. so I started, I started explaining to them what I was doing as I was doing it. Uh -huh. And that started working really yeah, well. That, that, that was genius. But not many people can do it. Nah. It's a really tough way to sell. So I go, okay, man, so the next phase of the sale that I have to take you through is all about solution awareness. Now what we're going to do here is this, the reason why I'm doing that is this, and I'm going to try and get these tie downs. So like, I guess man, like, what are you actually looking for? That's like, let's figure out those tie downs. Yeah. And they're like, huh? And I was like, yeah, like, what is it? And they go, oh, I guess it's this. And I go, okay, you probe a little bit, you get it. I go, okay, so now I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. Yeah. What I need to do now is given the information that I have, I got to link it back to this. So answer this for me. And they'd be like, okay. And then they answer it. And then I tie them into like a frame. And then I get a, like this and this and this. And then I pitch it, tie it all together. And I go, so man, like, where do you want to go from here? But let's do a recap first. Now, you know, I know more about sales than you do because Jeremy told me and I told you this, this, and this. Right. And I was like, I've got this on you. I've got this on you. I've already pre-handled time, money, think about it and partner. <laughs> so what do you want to do, champ? And then go, F I mean, I didn't inner circle sale in six minutes. Yeah, no. I got inner circle six minutes. What I did is I went, the guy came to me. He go, I go, hey man, like, what do you want to, what do you want to do? And he goes like, oh, I'd love, just love to get better objection handling. I go, awesome, man. Like what objections do you struggle with? He goes, really like money and sort of think about it. I was like, okay, cool. Do you think that those are valid objections? Like, do they benefit your prospect? He goes, no. I go, why not? And he explained to me for like two minutes why. I go, okay, cool, man. So like, pause role play. We got two options from here. We can continue for the next 30 minutes. I can just keep tying you up. I was like, or like, I was running short of time because I was running late. I go, or like, I've already, I've tied you up into a knot. I was like, I don't know if you know this, but you can go nowhere now. I was like, you can't give me time. You can't give me a partner. You can't give me think about it. You've said objections don't benefit mm. anyone. You've given me all these reasons. So you can buy it now and I can just take you through how much it costs. Mm. Or we can just continue along the facade. And he was like, okay, I'll buy it. <laughs> he just bought it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he paid the three grand. It was six minutes in that, and out. Do you think that like you two having this 
kind of gamified mindset around sex like fun. has been something that's been pretty important for you guys because I feel like you two no, look have up this like dynamic of like learning for each other throwing hard things at each other and like really pushing each other to get to this no, point as well uh, it's like throwing things at each other no because I look up to him mm-hmm. like I look up to Jeremy mm-hmm. so I suck up on knowledge so he comes out with the congruency frame I might release it to that code 25 times and come up with something else. right right like Jeremy, I've done a sales call with Jeremy. I swear, I listen more to the sales call than like uh, that I talk with my girlfriend. <laughs> I, I really listen to that thing so many times because I gotta find something. Yeah, I can't do what he does. Right, it doesn't work. I had to find that the concept, make it into my arsenal, my mm-hmm. dictionary. Close the dictionary. I, like, I got that. Boom. See ya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You gotta do things in your own way. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. Like if you if you watch this or if you're going through an EPQ. Stop being genuine minor because there is one genuine minor. Stop mm. being mad, there is one. Just do your own things. Understand the process, man. That's a big one. Mm. I think that's, once that's I, all I teach on my inner circle calls. I just teach process. That's I think it. once you once you you you, exactly. you say uh, we're, we're talking about like sales process. You like you can always be three questions ahead. I think we done it into a sales training when sales number was a little bit smaller. There was like five six people. Mm. Like I got it. Like, okay, I felt that way as well. It's like when you are into a process, I'm six questions ahead. Right. Just like you, I already know where the impact question is going to go, the consequences is going to go. Yeah. When I'm going to tell you into the presentation, five minutes in. Mm. A trick word of the sales people, I know they, they don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they, playing chess. Yeah. You should almost be able to see yourself having the sales call. Uh, yeah. So you sit in there having the sales call, but there's like another part of your brain because the sales is almost autopilot. Yeah. Like, okay, well. You're like having a conversation with yourself. Mm. Like, guys, oh, give me this. I gotta go here. This is gonna affect that way. Okay, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. Yeah. All right, cool. And then, but like the whole time, you're very engaged with the person. Mm. So it's like, but you can only do that if you know the process back to front. Exactly right. right. That's the good sales guy. Right. As that kind of like. And then you can tell. That's why Jeremy's like, because I can't do right. the physical. Mm. That's why I'm so still when I sell I'm like this. Like, because I'm so busy in my head, mm-hmm. whereas Jeremy knows it even so much better that he can be really animated when he sells, and then he uses mm-hmm. animation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he uses animation to like anchor certain thoughts and oh, stuff wow. like that. Okay. So he's right. like, he's constantly doing this. He does right. that in all of his presentations because that's right. how he anchors like where you are versus where you want right, to be. Right. And then he brings it back in and in consequence brings it back in, right. in all the pitching and stuff like that. Right. When he wants like openness, he does openness and stuff mm-hmm. like that. When he wants like agreeable answers and mm-hmm. So he's like tying it all in, right. his, his lean-ins, his yeah. tilts, right. well, like it's all planned. Right. Like, he knows exactly like what he's doing. Up. In enhancing the response he's yeah. trying to get right it's also so, like he like yeah. it's like he gets especially in person he has this like hyper focus right that you can't get out of like he's just like dialed in and you're like this yeah right? and he and stares like, you straight in the eye right yeah. and he's just like this right and you're he's just like, he's really engaged with you right and then he answers like he asks questions comfortable for most people like yeah, yeah. like in general like, whole point. if you were trying to do that though it would be uncomfortable mm, no because he hits, he hits the switch. You gotta right. understand. It is not like the normal Jeremy. I don't know Jeremy a lot right, enough, right. right? But it's like he hits the switch, so it does. It becomes more like okay, kind of leaning in towards mm. the end, right? Mm. He has that old man curiosity down pat. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you no. Know, so the 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 what does he say? He's like the confused old man. Right. It's his it's his favorite tonality. Uh huh. Huh? Like that, and so right. like it diffuses people, and right. they just want to give him information because mm-hmm. he comes across as genuinely confused. And I think half the time he is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he's just like genuinely. when he, his uh, life is confusion. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's like he, he comes up. <laughs> he comes up a top because like he brings them when they want to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've seen on a sales call with him. A sales call with him, and it's like he is really good. Oh, yes. But Silly. really good. Though. Silly. Like, oh, I have a lot to learn from <laughs> that. <laughs> because he's, um, he's like, as um, there's different stages. So it's like, one, you understand the process. Two, you understand the tonality. Three, you master the environment, which is like what he was saying. It's like, okay, I know and I can project what's going on and what will happen. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to start preparing what I got into that. After right. there is the, the, the body language. Which is like ease people into whatever you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. You master even the last one, which is like the presence. Mm-hmm. When he jumps on a sales call, it's like, oh, sh- it's coming. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't know who Jeremy Mario is, but it's like his own. You get a sense of when he's there. Yeah. That's interesting. He has an aura kind of like coming in. So oh, wow, like, interesting. Yeah. Just because like when, calming. Yeah, because when you, like, for example, uh-huh. we, we've done a couple of B2B, 
when I intercept, sometimes they speak over. Right. Sometimes I do the mic kind of things. Oh, oh I think my mic is not working. So they stop and they shut up and uh, uh-huh. move on, right? When he does it, they stop quiet. Right. Like, for me. <laughs> 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 but it's like, you understand that he has a respect right. and to coming in. And, it, right. and he, does, he hasn't had it because they don't know him. Mm. They just put it in quiet. Of course, they see him as a kind of thing mm. in the group. But he's like, yes, that thing is powerful, man. Super powerful. Just so confident. Yeah, he's so confident, man. Super. You know how many sales calls must have done? Oh. <laughs> how many sales calls have you done? Me? It's a lot. Yeah. Man, maybe like 15,000, I'd say. Oh, more wow. than that. Way more than that. Because oh, we used to have... Oh, way more than that. Oh, just when we used to call up to our list, you remember? We used to have 90 leads per month. No, I was doing the opening, so I had 250. Oh, no, I had 500 leads a month. Yeah, it's just for I used to do the openings, so. <laughs> you were trying to. Yeah, trying to try it. Yeah. You were from like jeans, uh, from, you were jeans from the middle of nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so you remember, because you did the ongoing, I did the openings. Yeah. So I, I would do, but then when I did SigFit, when I did, when I had my own gyms, and then when I combined, but yeah. They have to be like, because I was making, I was making, on average during an opening, I was making 14 sales a day. Mm-hmm. So that was six days a week. So it was 84 sales a week. It was sales. Uh, yeah. I used to enjoy those sales. That was tough, man. I enjoyed I it until... I used gym once. I used a bag of tissues underneath the couch because people would start breaking my... The first ever salesperson that told me how to sell was fitness because he was running a gym as well yeah. and hired a marketer and targeted online marketing. He was a 21-year-old kid in Canada. And he, he, said, get, he said, get some tissues. He said, this is the iceberg. This is the training. He's like, this is an iceberg. All the emotions underneath the surface. Yeah. <laughs> that was his yeah, training. It was a PowerPoint <laughs> on sales. <laughs> that was the yeah. obligation. Yeah. It was yeah. like, yeah. find yeah. the yeah. iceberg. Yeah. I'm like, oh, so I'd sit there and it would turn into a therapy session. And people would start crying right. on sales. the couch. I was like, fuck. They still, no, they, do. they still don't buy. <laughs> 77, I used to sell 77 a week. And they used to come up with, I was like, that's so much money. In my head, I was like, what are you talking about? $77 <laughs> a week. Yeah. Oh my God. To get fit. Unlimited and training session. Unlimited training session. In tra- yeah, yeah. In the oh. gym. Like you also training. get nutrition, you get body fats. You know, God, you know, that's cheap. Coach, it's a good deal. It's practically yeah. free. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah. I spend more than that on yoga to my kids. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's really yeah, cheap. Yeah. When we used to do the 197, 20, the, the, the 28, 28 days, they were the toughest one. Mm. Yeah. They were the toughest 197. one. 197. Most people didn't even know why they were on the phone. They didn't know, like, that's, that's how we got real good. Because they didn't know why the marketing wasn't present. Mm. The marketing was like, 28 days challenge, a lady from the US that uh-huh. I want to use. She's Steph Packer. She's always Steph Packer. There's always Steph Packer. She's a fitness model. There's always Steph Packer. <laughs> Put it there. Okay. It's so like, ah, I'm just going from. They didn't know the name of the, the thing. They're yeah. asking for credit card deal. Those people never paid enough for credit card deal mm-hmm. before. Yeah. They weren't buying enough. No and then idea. when the gyms weren't open, they're like, can I come check it out? Like, no. <laughs> it's a construction site. <laughs> So you gotta get over that. And you gotta. Oh I never had that though. Man. My goodness. I never had that. Man. Remember the pre-selling chats with us. That's tough. real. That's real sales though, isn't it? Yeah, like you've got no products. You've got no nothing. product, no gym, no nothing. You're just Bro, when, I, when I pre-sold selling chats with hope and a dream. Yeah, but you didn't, have a, you didn't have a cigarette, man. I didn't oh have a cigarette. Did they used to update? They didn't even have a f-ing zap set up to the Google Sheet. So that what they would do is they would twice a day send us a new Excel spreadsheet over email. Yeah, and we used to copy and paste that. Hey, co- hey, yes. Bro. Ooh, man. Zapier has been around for a while. Yeah. yeah that sounds insane. Right. sounds It's so stupid. Old. Some of the shit that we, yeah, man. It feels like it was in the 90s, but it wasn't that long. That's, that's going back on the growth thing. Uh-huh. You got four years ago. You got it. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm thinking now. I'm just thinking, fuck, we're thinking back to that kind of a sell. Like, yeah. imagine something, even no product, no gym, no nothing. They've no. never heard of you. There's no Bro, this is, this is what they got. When I, when I opened, listen. the last gym that I opened, like, they gave me four Four staff, none of them ever sold a thing in their life. Yeah. They didn't want to be salespeople. They were all trainers. And so I, um, we had a KPI. We had to sell 250 from 500 phone numbers. So we had a, we had, our KPI was 50%. Yeah. So we had to sell of all, of all leads. And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, and we, I think I hit 220. So I didn't quite get it, but I got pretty close. And um, I ended up doing all of it myself. Mm. So in three weeks, I sold 220 memberships. 
And then I sold 125 for the subsequent challenge. Mm. And no help. Those guys couldn't close a door. Well, I imagine they sold probably 20 between them and you sold all the other 200. <laughs> I think they sold like six between them. Yeah. Well, they, could, they, like, so, they couldn't but do the, upsells. But, 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 but I, yeah. They couldn't do upsells. That's the mo- that's the. If we came in, I don't know if we sell everyone. Yeah, I don't know if we went too much outside the scope, but I was like, they couldn't do upsells right. for nothing, man. Yeah. We used to send those people for 28 days. After I was like, no, the club does the upsell. Right. Because we don't want to pay and commission. No, no, no grab sell. Yeah. That was just terrible, man. After you used to send them there, people used to sell them on the phone, sell them on the gym. They could like the trainer didn't approach the, the guy because it was in the middle of the session. It's terrible. See, I see I did the upsells for my clubs because I yeah, was I was yeah. there. So I was the one I was coaching as well. So I did I used to book and I used to do group upsells and I make it real awkward. So I had a I made a I made a playbook, like I made a, a brochure they had to fill out as they went. So we did it on like it was the twenty eight days, we did it on like day twenty four or something like that, right? And they filled it out as they went and I made them future pace their goals. What happened to I actually did like four NDPQ, just didn't know it in a group. Like what were they gonna do? What are their ramifications if they don't move forward? Like what do they want? What are their dreams, aspirations, and that kind of stuff? And I said, Okay, who thinks that like fifty seven dollars a week is a reasonable amount of money to pay to get what they've written down there? Mm. And everyone tell me what they've written down. And I was like, Sweet, here's the contracts. Who doesn't want to move forward? And I'd make him like, if you don't want to move forward, just raise your hand. And you have to leave and, in front of everybody And they else. would look around. Oh, uh, yeah. And nobody would do it. And I'd go, here's the paperwork. Mm-hmm. I'd pre-filled out their credit card details. I'd pre-filled out everything. Oh, wow. All they do is sign, sign it. Sign it? Yeah. Yeah. I used to f- up so like a mother. That way, oh. super awkward. Oh, man. So, so here doesn't do all as a so here doesn't want to achieve their goals it's because I tried it the other way. Who wants to God. move forward? God. And then everyone's scared to move forward, so oh, I changed right. it to who doesn't. <laughs> and then <laughs> the, is the most assumptive sale on the planet. So awkward. Yeah. And then Sally would walk up and leave. I go, bye, Sally. All the best. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> the old fat <Man>. lady. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Have a good time. <laughs> yeah, ruthless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just those people. But hey, I had to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, they got fit. Yeah. All right. That's enough. Hope you guys like this. Make sure you like, subscribe, and the notification bell, all that kind of good stuff. And thank you. Bye. It's just the I think it's this. I bought her a yeah. Brandon's handbag yeah. yesterday yeah. for a Christmas present. <laughs> Stitched me up a couple of times with Chanel. But <laughs> so, uh, I'll buy some for Sammy. I'll send it to her and I'll go make um, it. I'll go get you one. <laughs> Stitch me up. Yeah. Though he left. So this is a funny story. This is this is a good, a good example. So he left, mm. started a, comp- a competitive business. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> yeah, then they said, then they said, Jimmy, I just need to go away. Think about this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I spend this much on coffee every week, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>